If you're interested in pen testing and hacking tools, then this video is for you. I'm gonna do a bit of a review and breakdown of Hack5's KeyCroc Keylogger. Now, if you're familiar with normal key loggers, it's normally some type of software that sits on top of your target host and captures the keystrokes of whatever the target individual is uh, typing into the keyboard. Well, Hack5's KeyCroc blows this completely out of the water. Instead of needing to have actual access to the physical device to install some type of key logging software, this is a device that sits in line between the target's keyboard and their host machine. On top of that, the KeyCroc has a Wi-Fi antenna, which allows you to actually be able to remotely access this device when you're using it on a pen test. This will allow you to pull off information and also remotely manage the device. And lastly, because it's running on Linux, there's various types of scripts that you can enable on the device that allow you to do a whole bunch of different cool stuff, such as activate the key logging function based off of certain types of sequences that are input into the keyboard. If you're not psyched, get psyched, because today we're going to be talking about Hack5's KeyCroc. Hey everybody, what's good? What's going on? JB here with another Cyber Insight video. Thanks for coming back to the channel and making your new spot for cyber and network knowledge. If this is your first time here, I hope you like it. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you stick around. And if you do like it and you do enjoy it, make sure that you do hit that like, subscribe, notification bell because honestly, it would just be kind of creepy if you like watching people's YouTube videos and you don't like or subscribe to their channel. So. <laughs> so, uh, Hack5's KeyCroc. Uh, super excited to talk about this today. I've done some previous Hack5 uh, reviews of some of their other pen testing tools. I think I did the uh, Screen Crab and I did the uh, Shark Jack. And those are awesome. However, those reviews I did as a blog post only. So this is gonna be my first actual video review of uh, a Hack5 uh, tool set. So really excited about that. The interesting thing or in the way that I try to approach um, these reviews is I am not a pen tester. So I don't use these tools in my normal day-to-day -day life. So I'm really approaching it from the perspective of somebody who has IT knowledge but not necessarily understanding the, uh, the trade craft that goes into some of these tools. For me, it's interesting to find out about these tools because as an engineer and an architect, I'm always trying to build environments that are as secure as possible. So understanding the threats that exist within the space helps me ensure that I put the right types of protections in place. So with all that said, what are we actually gonna talk about today? Well, first we're gonna do an overview of the KeyCroc and its capabilities. We're gonna do a little bit of an unboxing and I'm gonna uh, configure it here, show you kind of what the, the file structure looks like and how we go about setting up different scripts. And then I'm gonna take it and uh, do some testing on one of the workstations that's here within the house. We're just gonna do some really, really simple stuff. And lastly, we're gonna talk about some ways that we can try to defend against these types of tools. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's hop into the computer and take a look at the KeyCroc. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna tell you, which is awesome, is that Hack5's websites for all of their tools gives you such a great breakdown of their capabilities. And then they also have a great documentation section and a forum section where people ask all sorts of questions whenever they run into any problems or kind of have some new or cool uh, tips or tricks towards using the different tools. So let's take a look at a high level overview of what the KeyCroc is. I did kind of mention it briefly in uh, the intro of the video, but honestly, this coming straight from Hack5 is gonna make a little bit more sense. So we talked about the fact that it's a keylogger, but it's so much more than a keylogger. It can emulate different types of trusted devices, whether it's a serial storage, uh, HID or ethernet. And then as I mentioned, you're able to use different types of scripts to do different types of things on the device to be able to capture specific types of sequences of keystrokes. And the really cool thing is because it's all based on top of Linux, you actually are able to use other types of pen test tools. And they kind of say that here, where you can use Nmap, Responder, Metasploit, things like that. So really, really cool right off the bat. We talked a bit about the pattern matching payloads. 
Now this is gonna make a lot of sense when you're talking about maybe you only want to capture uh, traffic when somebody inputs control alt delete, right? In that case, you know that normally whenever somebody uses control alt delete, they're gonna be unlocking their computer or at least half the time they'd be unlocking their computer. You would immediately capture the input that is done after that which would hopefully end up being the username and password for the individual. Now here we have, uh, if you're at all familiar with uh, Hack5's different tool sets, then you know that whenever you get them, uh, it, they end up coming in a little package. Um, looks, like, looks like this, right? And they always have these cool little diagrams that simplify and break down what uh, the device is and kind of like the different buttons on it and, and capabilities and stuff like that. And again, here we have a perfect breakdown of really how to use this. Um, there's a hidden button underneath that's used for arming it. So that button will flip back and forth uh, between arming it or turning it into a regular USB device, which is where we would actually go to A, pull off the loot as they call it, right? So whatever uh, data that we're capturing or um, to do any types of configurations with the scripts or um, other types of things of that nature. We did talk about the fact that it does have a Wi-Fi antenna. This is great so you can access the device remotely. You also can use their C2 server, um, which I think we're gonna talk about, yep, right underneath here, um, which is a very cool tool that they have that allows you to uh, manage and remotely configure all of the uh, different tool sets that they have available. Um, it is important to note that this is a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi antenna, so you do need to take that into account when you go to connect it to uh, a Wi-Fi network. Other kind of cool things on here, we see that it actually does have half a gig RAM and a eight gigabyte solid state drive, um, which is running the uh, Linux that is there. So uh, as they say here, a full featured Linux box with a root shell ready for you. I did mention the Cloud C2. This is an application that you can host on your own devices. So I actually have one running on my desktop here. We aren't necessarily gonna go into uh, Cloud C2 today. It is something that we could dive a little bit deeper into in the future if it's something that interests folks. Now, the thing that I love about these Hack5 tools, especially for me coming as not being a pen tester, is that the majority of these actually just work right out of the box. You can just take it, plug it in, turn it on, and for the most part, the basic functionality of what the tool is trying to do, you're able to do. And the Keycroft does not disappoint in this way either. As it mentions here, it will automatically clone the keyboard IDs and start capturing or, or logging uh, keystrokes right away. And this, the, the feature section uh, for all of these Hack5 tools is great. It kind of just breaks it down real simple for you. Of what it is that you're getting, uh, the capabilities that it has, uh, the integration possibilities that it has. So plug and play, like I just mentioned, right out of the box, good to go, and you're gonna get that basic functionality. You can manage it through the Cloud C2. It automatically clones the hardware uh, that you are emulating when you put the device in line. The process for configuring uh, the device is very, very simple. And it also uses uh, the LED status lights to kind of give you a breakdown of the different types of modes of operation that it's in. You can also use this from the perspective of network hijacking. So if you have some type of connection that is using a USB ethernet connection, this can be slid in place, thus bypassing any type of network layer protections that you'd normally see at the perimeter, such as firewalls or IDSs. Now, interesting thing that they do mention here is using it as a combo kit with a screen crab. Now screen crab, which I have here as well, screen crab is a very cool tool that would normally sit in between uh, a HDMI monitor and a computer. You would normally take the input from the computer, plug it into here, and then the output would go to the monitor. And what this does is it captures a screenshot of everything that comes across. And you can set this to be at a certain interval, whether you want to take a screenshot every one second or every 10 seconds or every 60 seconds. Um, and saves it on here on a uh, storage chip. All right, and uh, this is also Wi-Fi enabled as well. So. You could really double up if you really wanted to get some type of uh, full coverage here with all of the data that you're trying to get, both from a key logging perspective and from a screenshot perspective. 
kind of a, a cool little bundle as far as uh, using those tools together. Now, if you haven't guessed, I kind of went a little bit overboard um, last Thanksgiving during the Hack 5 Black Friday sale. And so I actually bought almost everything they have. So we got a land turtle, screen crab, plunder bug, USB rubber ducky. Um, let's see what else we got. A packet squirrel. Bash bunny. Have a Wi-Fi pineapple, which I've messed around with a little bit. And then, as I mentioned, the uh, tools that I had already done reviews on was the screen crab, and then this cool little guy here, the shark jack. All right, so one other thing that I wanted to take you and kind of show you real quick is um, their documentation section. If you buy any Hack5 tools, this is gonna be the first place that you're gonna wanna go. Um, this is gonna give you the basic stuff to get you started. As I mentioned, it's really plug and play. You can go and start right off the bat, but it is good to kind of go through here and um, look at how to set the device up, how to update the device, how to get Wi-Fi access, how to connect it to C2. Um, it also will go into a little bit uh, of payload development. So you want to end up doing some different stuff with scripts as far as uh, different types of functions, then this is a good place to start as well. And over on the tips section here, we have some stuff where so we were talking about the fact that because it is uh, running on top of Linux that you can install other types of tool sets on there. We're talking about Nmap, Met Metasploit, things like that. We do have uh, some recommendations for that over here. So this is definitely a spot that you will want to check out. I will put a link for this page and the other page I went to in the description of the video. So that will help you out. Let's just take a quick look at the basics that are involved here. And then I'm gonna take it, plug it in, and we're gonna take a little look at the uh, configuration files that exist on it already. So right off the bat, we get some different types of lighting here. If you get a white light, then it means that it's not attached to any type of keyboard. Um, plugging in a standard uh, compatible USB keyboard will cause the Keycroc LED to turn off and the device to enter what is known as attack mode. At that point, that's when the device actually clones the hardware ID. And at that point, any type of keystrokes that are passed through the device end up being captured. So when you're ready to pull the information off or you're done doing the attack, there's an arming button that you end up hitting. When you do that, the key croc will actually turn blue or the light, the LED will turn blue. At that point, it has reverted back to being pretty much a USB flash drive that you can then go and pull the data off of or do any other types of configurations that you need to. So the config.txt file is what you want to do when you are uh, changing the basic configurations here for the key croc. You can just use your normal standard um, text editor for that. It is worth noting that the language key map is set to US by default. Then we get into some of the networking stuff. So this is where we can set up um, access to a 2.4 gigahertz wireless network. It is important, I will say this because I've run into this before, when it comes to using special characters in your um, password or your SSID, you do need to make sure that you use uh, or you escape them with a uh, backslash. Otherwise, that will not work. So that is key information there when you go to set this up. And you can also enable or disable the, the SSH, DNS. If you want to set up specific uh, device IDs instead of uh, cloning, then you can do that under the, um, the device section here. And then we kind of go over a breakdown of the, the file and directory structure. This is kind of the main places that you're going to be hitting and editing, right? So we talked about the config text. They do have some documentation links in, in there, on there, so you don't even necessarily need access to the internet to be able to figure out what you need to do with that. So that's kind of a handy thing to know. Loot is where all of your captured uh, keystrokes are going to be. Payloads is active payload, so those are going to be different things. So we were talking about a payload that could activate uh, the key logging function based off of different types of uh, command sequences, so control alt delete or something like that. And tools would be where additional thing, additional installation packages are. We've got the default settings to get into it. And then we have the LED status indications. We kind of talked about some of these. These are good to know. Um, 
when you're messing around with it and if you need to do any type of troubleshooting. We don't necessarily need to go through the rest of these right here um, because I'm not actually gonna do any connecting it to my Wi-Fi or anything like that in this video. Um, we're just doing basic stuff. But uh, if we were, we could go over uh, getting it online, configuring it for C2 we talked about before, languages we said was default to English, so payloads, this would be a good section to read up on um, if you wanted to do something other than just a default out of the box. The way that the payloads normally work is on a match type of configuration. So, so depending upon which keystrokes are typed in, then it triggers to do some type of action. If you want to see what payloads folks have put together, you can go to the GitHub page. Now, the thing with the payloads is if you put them in the payloads folder, that means that when uh, the device is turned on and activated, then those payloads are activated. So that is something to beware uh, when you are picking and choosing different things um, to make sure that you're only putting the ones in the payload folder that you are actually wanting to use at that time. That is a default action, but if you uh, didn't want to move them out of your payload folder, you can also use the uh, disabled uh, string at the beginning of all of the payloads names that you want to be disabled at that time. All right, so let's take this, open this up, get inside of it and see what we have going on inside of a brand new key crock. All right, as I mentioned with all of these, there's a cool little card that comes with that that gives you a little breakdown. It is pretty much the same exact information that we just went over in the website so you're not missing out i don't think i need to go full screen to show you uh, any of that stuff and then here we have the kick rock very very simple we have one end that the uh keyboard connection is going to go into this other end is going to go into the uh, usb port on the computer the arming button is gonna be this little, little, little tiny pinhole. I don't know if you can see it. I'll try to get some light on there. But there's a little tiny pinhole up there. That's the arming button. And then on the flip side, there is a LED light there. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna plug this in um, and I'll be right back and we can take a look at the file structure. Funny thing to notice here, as soon as I plugged this into my computer to do uh, the configuration on here, take a look at what popped up. I got a nice little message saying that my computer can't be identified. Now, if I remember correctly, when this came out, there were some issues with Mac in the past. I'm not sure. I think that has been resolved. Um, but that is kind of interesting to see that pop up. So at the moment, when I did that and plugged that in, it is putting off a white light, meaning that no keyboard is connected. So we're gonna try plugging in this cool little USB keyboard. Let's see how this goes. Okay. It is no longer lighting up. So I would assume that that means that that might be working. Let's take a look. Yep, okay. It's capturing stuff. Let's go gmail.com and we'll put in not my real email. Let's do, yeah, let's go Bank of America. I don't actually have a Bank of America account, but we could go and take a look. All right, so we're gonna go, we're gonna put in the test test password and you see we can't see it on the screen so if we were using the um the screen crab we'd be out of luck but let's go and do that okay and let's go what's another good facebook test at facebook.com facebook let's try that all right, didn't like that. All right, so now let's actually get into the device and see if it was able to capture all the stuff right off the bat. As far as the arming on this goes, I'm just gonna use a paper clip. So this, gonna hit the button. 
heard it click. And now it is flashing blue. And if you remember, it means arming mode, which means that we should be able to get into the key croc. And as we can see here, under the finder, key croc has popped up over here. So let's take a quick look and see what we got in here. Under the config file, the config.txt, really, really basic as they said in the breakdown. The only thing in here that is activated at the moment is a ducky language being US, right? So we kind of already talked about that before. We mentioned SSH being able to uh, be disabled or enabled. You need to have the Wi-Fi turned on for that though. Here we'd put in our SID or our Wi-Fi password. Again, remember to use the backslash for special characters and then uh, DNS. So really, really basic. I have a readme text. And this is pretty much all the same stuff that we kind of went over before through the basic stuff. So awesome to have that here and available. Uh, we got a whole bunch of language files, library. I don't think that we really need to mess with any of that at the moment. Loot. All right, so let's take a look and see what it was able to capture. We got a whole bunch of me just doing gibberish. Gmail.com, enter, Google.com, enter, Verizon.com, Google.com. So here kind of looking through here. So this isn't exactly perfect and maybe I'm just reading this wrong. Um, it did get my test and test password for what I did for Bank of America, BOA.com. Um, and then for Facebook.com, which we have here, it was test at Facebook.com. And that was the email that I entered. And then the password was Facebook password. Okay, so it did capture that. Uh, for BOA.com, it was test and then test password. So what's kind of interesting here is that it wasn't necessarily getting all of the rest of what was typed in, but that's probably because it wasn't actually typed in and the browser tried to auto finish and I just hit enter. So that would make sense why, um, you know, we're only gonna get what was actually input into the keyboard. So that worked pretty great right off the you know, right off the bat, no changes. And that's just raw log. That's not going to do me any good. So, and payloads. And then just a sample payload. And we could do an upgrade as far as tools. Nothing in the tools. We haven't downloaded anything um, and put that in there. So, other things that we might want to look up here before we wrap this up, we didn't do any of the actual real payload testing. That's because I think this video is going to be going a little bit long. I really didn't want to make an hour long video. I just wanted to kind of give you a little bit of a quick overview and kind of maybe wet your whistle, I guess, for lack of a better term. Actually, that's a horrible term. I take that back. Um, but if you are interested in me doing more uh, stuff, actually going in depth and messing around with some different payloads and stuff like that, let me know. I'm more than happy to do it. I love all the Hack5 tools. Um, you know, pretty cool right out, right out of the box that you can just plug this in um, and do what you're able to do. I didn't even need to enable any Wi-Fi. I didn't do it any SSH, didn't do uh, any of the other payloads. That was the one thing that I wanted to take a look at. So if we go and take a look at the payloads that are here, we see that uh, Darren's actually the one that's putting a lot of stuff uh, up on here. I want to give a shout out to Darren. He was actually uh, the one who sent me this key croc. So really, really appreciate him uh, doing that. I've been meaning to actually make this video for a super, super long time, but just have been caught up um, in other content that I had to get out. So I figured what better time to do it than uh, right around uh, Thanksgiving when everybody's looking to buy some cool hacking tools. Let's go Keycroc forums, payloads, here we go. So we got a whole bunch of different stuff in here. This is some that was enabling SSH. Uh, 
one that was like clearing uh, the log stored on the key crock, some Windows password ones. Got a, got a few in here. It's allow you to, uh, I think this one would allow you to mail stuff out. And it seems to be pretty easy to write those. Um, if you have any other needs other than what it does, which it is pretty awesome right out of the box, right? So uh, let's see if there's anything else. From a, from a defense perspective, what do we do with something like this? It's cloning the... Um, the hardware IDs of our USB devices. So it's not like we're going to be able to look for, uh, you know, unique IDs um, of stuff that we don't have in the environment. Uh, I mean, I guess at this point, it's almost kind of the same thing that we would have to do with the screen crab. And that is, you know, the physical security and being aware of what devices are plugged in where really comes a lot into play. Um, the Wi-Fi portion of this, I mean, depending on whether or not you have Wi-Fi in your environment, you could be, you know, doing periodic scans, looking for Wi-Fi signals and stuff like that. So maybe you could pick up on that. But I mean, if we're talking about somebody who's just trying to get something and get out of there, the chances of them having a device plugged in running Wi-Fi for a super long period of time probably is pretty low. But that is one thing. On the other hand, I think, yeah, just uh, awareness of where, I think awareness of what your cables are plugged into um, is probably going to be one of the, the better bets with being aware and, and protecting against, you know, these types of penetration tools. Short of that, I think it's pretty hard to, uh, to protect against something like that, at least with, you know, keylogger software. There's a lot, uh, a lot of things that we could do to protect that, uh, you know, on the box as far as limiting things being downloaded and stuff like that. But yeah, with, with this tool, this one's a tough one. So I've really been stewing on this, trying to come up with some, you know, ways that we can protect or be aware of that type of thing. And in my mind, it really comes back to physical awareness of where uh, your devices are plugged into. I mean, if you had a PC that only had uh, connections available for USB connections on the front, then if you saw your keyboard plugged into this weird other little thing that's plugged in, that would kind of stick out and, and you know, you'd be wondering what that is. Whereas in if everything is run to the back of your PCs and you're using USB connections on the back, you know, you could very easily take something and hide something like that. We talked a, a bit about the Hack 5 key crock. We went through um, its capabilities, what it can do out of the box. Um, actually using it right out of the box with no configurations, being able to get keystrokes back, which was awesome. And then a little bit about awareness and how to defend against tools of this type. So, all right, so I'm going to go unplug this stuff and I will see you in a second. All right, well, that wraps up our review of Hack 5's Key Croc. I hope that that was interesting and entertaining for you. And if that kind of pushed you or nudged you in the direction of checking out some of Hack 5's other tools, then you should definitely do that. Especially around this time of year with the Black Friday sales going on, you can get some of their stuff at a great price. So I'll put a link for uh, Hack 5 down in the description down below. Uh, if you have any other topics that you want me to talk about, or if you want me to do some other video reviews of Hack 5's other tool sets, let me know. I'd love to hear that feedback. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, notification bell, because I mean, seriously, if you've made it all the way to the end of the video, what are you doing? You should be subscribed. You should like the videos. Come on. <laughs> All right. Have a great holiday. Take care of yourselves and each other, and we will talk soon. All right. Bye.